Hello everyone, this is session 5 of Perus Material 101 via MATLAB and I'm Arash. Today we're going to talk about overlapped spherical beds but before that let's do a little bit of recap about the previous session that we have made Gaussian random structures to be representing a Perus material. So I have converted that piece of code into a simple function that takes you size, porosity, and a standard deviation of the numbers to make this random structure. And if I want to use that here, I will go with uh, clear and a is equal to rand goes of a function of size, which is right now, for example, is 100 cubed, porosity, which for example is 0.2, and the standard deviation, which is, for example, 2. Okay, and then if I want to visualize this structure, I will use this piece of code. And let's wait for the results. Yeah. So here it is the made structure, as you can see. It's fairly random. Okay. So in today's session, we're going to do the almost the same thing, but with a spherical beads which will make you a pack of particles which we almost also call a particle bed so right now but the point is that this spheres this is spherical particles they can overlap with each other which makes the coding much more easier okay so right now i'm going to start with the size i will say that it's 100 cube okay and then we predefine our geometry to be a matrix of zeros okay and then let's think about 100 spheres that we wanted to put inside this geometry with the radius of for example 10 voxels okay so Let's make some random numbers that will be the centers of these spheres. So, for example, uh, if we wanted to change some values inside matrix A, like this, and I, mm, the maximum number of uh, these random locations would be not larger than the total number of elements inside matrix A, which is product of array S. And then number of this points, random points inside this structure. And one is just the other dimension of this random numbers. And we put all these values into one, OK? So this line of the code, it will randomly put 100 points of matrix A, which is all 0 equal to 1, OK? And then we're going to use a function which is predefined in MATLAB, and it's known as uh, Euclidean Distance Transform, and it works like this. So B is equal to BW dist of A, which simply calculates the distance of each of the points inside the volume from the closest non zero point inside that volume. So if we simply run this part of the code, it will give us array B. If we wanted to see this array, I can do it like this. Okay, so as you can see, there are different values inside this array. And if I turn on the color bar, you can see that there are some sort of spheres here. And the distance from the center of this sphere is increasing like this, as you can see by changing, changing the color from blue to green and yellow. So if we threshold, you know, 
uh, this geometry, it will actually give us a pack of spheres, but the point is that they may be overlapped, yeah, because we didn't put any limitations about the centers of these spheres, okay? So right now, I will uh, change this part of the code to be B is smaller than the radius, and then if we visualize this, as you can see, we have well the spheres, but they're somehow overlapping with each other. Okay, so right now, if I increase the number of spheres, for example, from 100 to 300, you will see that this structure is getting more crowded and the porosity is decreasing. I can increase the number of spheres to reach my favorable porosity value and make my you know, desired texture inside this porous material. Yeah, okay, let's also visualize it using wall which probably gives you a better insight about these spheres. Yeah, this is it. Thank you very much, everybody, for seeing this session, and see you in the next session. Thank you. Bye.